Today I'm going to be redressing the face of one of my hammers. It's actually the oldest hammer that I own, so it was the first one that I ever got about five or six years ago. I don't think I've ever redressed the face or the peen or anything like that, so it, it needs doing. It has quite a nasty bevel on, which is dangerous if anything. That can you know, break off and then bits fly off at quite a, quite a speed, so you don't want that to happen. And also it puts nasty dings in your work when you're forging. Also, it needs a new handle, so whilst I'm dressing the face, I might as well just make a new handle for it too and you can sort of see the processes that I go through when making a handle for a hammer. So this is the hammer that we're going to be re-handling. This was actually the first ever hammer head that I got and obviously that came with the handle. I think this is the third handle that this hammer, hammer head has had. Um, so in this one the wedge has fallen out the end. There is still a steel peg in there but the wooden wedges flung, it got ejected out of the end whilst in use, so it's not really safe anymore. So I need to make a new handle. This one's a bit sort of old and battered anyway. So I've got a piece of old handle, which I'm gonna just cut a section out of and then remake for a new handle for this hammer. Also, this head needs redressing. As you can see, it's got sort of a bit of a, a burr or mushroom forming on the end as I've, I've used it that much. I've never dressed this hammer since I've had it and I've, as I said, I've gone through quite a few handles on it. So I think it's about time that I just grind all of this mushrooming off and put a nice new dressed face on the end. So the first thing to do is to try and get the handle out of the head. So I'll put it in the vise. Then I'm gonna start it off with this, which is actually a punch. Um, is to drive it, the first little section, down. And now go to this punch. Nearly there. Right, I'll cut the handle off and then try driving it through a little bit more. There you go, it's got a new handle now. <laughs> it's perfect. Okay, uh, let's try to drive it out the rest of the way. Who do you get in a hammerhead? Handle out of a hammerhead would be such hard work. <laughs> there we go. So I ended up drilling a couple of holes in it, which loosened off the punch. Uh, I just used a chisel then to knock the rest uh, of the wood out. This hammerhead has seen, seen better days, but I still want to save it. You know, it was my first hammer, so we can clean it up easily enough. I think the next thing is to dress the end. So grind off this burr and just get it. It's also a bit sort of misshapen, so we can put a new flat on it. So this is obviously a ball peen hammer. So it's got a ball peen and then a flat face. And the flat face is obviously used to forge things flat. However, we want it to have a slight radius, just a very, very slight radius in that direction and well, in all directions really. And then a bit of a, a bit of a rounded edge, not a sharp edge. If, if you have a sharp edge and you're slightly off, perfectly, uh, perfectly parallel, when you hit, you'll get little sort of divots forming in your piece, which you then have to go back and hammer flush, which can just be really annoying. So you do want a slight, slight radius edge on all of the sides. However, I've actually been liking with this hammer, you can see at the moment, it does have a really sharp edge. And I've actually sort of liked that in a way when I've been forging shoulders or anything like that. The sharp edge has been really useful to get in and create a nice shoulder. However, this is a little bit too sharp as you do then run the risk of digging in and forming uh, cold shots, which you never want to do. So a nice radius edge just to ensure that you don't forge cold shots and you don't forge any nasty sort of divot marks and bruises into your work pieces. So I've just doing this with an angle grinder. Really, a belt sander would be much better, but an angle grinder is all I got, so let's make it work. So 
You can see that I'm touching the head of the hammer, the face of the hammer, and I'm just checking that it's not getting too hot, so I don't ruin the temper on it. It's fine. It's sort of only lukewarm at the moment. But you just got to make sure, you know, if you get it too hot, you're going to ruin the temper, and then your hammer's just going to be even worse. I mean, this hammer, because you can see it's beveled, you know that it's not actually going to be made a good steel, but um, yeah, I still don't want to ruin the temper, as if I ruin the temper then it will bevel even quicker than it did this time. So we've got this side all ground up and I hope that you can see I get it there you can sort of see that it is a slight radius on the face uh, but I what I want to do now is just go and grind sort of redress the ball peen as well as you can see it's sort of got a bit a bit mushroomed as well in a way so we can just grind that back so it's nice and round So we need to polish the face and the peen. When I say polish, all that I'm going to do is take take it to sort of a, about 120, 150. It doesn't have to be a mirror polish. To do it, I've got this rotary tool. I don't have any sort of um, higher grit discs for the angle grinder, so I use this just to, to polish it up a little bit more. And of course, it'll look a little bit nicer than it does at the moment. So unfortunately, I couldn't get it to a high enough polish with that uh, rotary tool. So I'm going to hand sand the face and the peen, um, which isn't ideal as it takes a long time, but I'll get it there eventually. The face is looking really nice now, you can see it there, catching the light, it's really smooth, it's nice, I mean it is only 120 grit, but I think, you know, off my past experiences with the hammers, 120 grit doesn't show up when you're forging, so that's fine. I've also, as you can see, given the rest of the hammer a nice wire brush, so it just looks, looks a little better, rather than it being a sort of slightly rusty steel. I think that's it for the hammerhead for now. We can put that to one side and get to work on the handle. So when we're talking about hammers and hammer handle length, a general rule of thumb is that if you put it in the crook of your, 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 crook of your elbow and then you have your fingers, and I like it so that I, my fingers just curl over the end of the hammer, I find that that's just a nice length when forging. So some people say, that your hammer handle should be almost to the end of your fingers. So you can see on this one, my fingers only just get over the end there. And so some people say that this is actually what your, your hammer handle length should be. I find personally when I'm using this hammer, this is the, the curve faced hammer. So when I'm using this one, I find that it just feels a little bit off and a little bit too long. I mean, maybe that's because I've gotten used to to other ham, uh, hammers with shorter handles, but I find it's a little bit too long this one. So for the hammer that I'm about to make, or rather the handle that I'm going to make, I've got this piece of old handle. I'm presuming it's ash. Hopefully it is, although it's a bit light and the, the grain may be telling me that it's pine, which would be bad. But hopefully it's... Uh, it's ash um, and this one I've cut a little bit long so you can see there 
my, my it's basically as long as my fingers are there from the crook of my elbow and that's so that whilst I'm fitting it up we've got plenty of material if the head ends up too far down you know I can just cut a little bit off the end to, to even it out or, or however it's going to form up. So at the moment this piece of wood is round and we don't want it to be round we want it to have nice flat sides so I prefer a plain handle basically just a rectangular handle with rounded corners I find that the, the easiest to use is you can easily move your hand up and down as you're forging so essentially I've just got to take the sides off of this piece of wood to cut these sides down I'm actually going to use an old uh, draw knife this may look a little rusty that's just because I don't use it that often it's still sharp um, I think this will be probably the quickest way just to get these sides down as you know I don't really want to use a grinder because I don't want all that dust in the workshop so just carefully take these sides down and obviously I've orientated the grain of the wood so the grain is going sort of in this direction down the bar layers and so the hammer head will sort of sit perpendicular to those those uh, layers of grain which I think is probably the safest way to put the head onto a handle I think I said perpendicular what I actually meant was parallel then about the grain as the grain is running down the, the, the handle like this in layers there and so the hammer head is going to go on the end so the, the layers are then running parallel with the eye in the hammer. So now we've got the sides roughed in, obviously we, we're going to have to take these now sharp corners off to get that all rounded, but it, it's fitting nicely in the hand, I think it's a pretty good width that we've got going on it. Um, the next thing to do, I think before sort of finishing off the main body of the handle, is get the head, the hammer head, fit up on one of the ends, got to pick an end to put it on, probably this one I think. Um, so again, I'm going to carefully take material off with the draw knife and then, you know, of course, always checking the head as I'm going, making sure that the fit is, is good. So then we can finish up the rest of the handle and get the head onto it. And something very satisfying about using a draw knife and how I don't know it's just a very old tool an old-fashioned tool yeah it does the job really well it's really quick you can be really careful with it when you need to be like now you know I don't want to be taking loads of material off So we can get the head on and off. So the next thing to do is to take these corners down and I'll, I'll do it off camera because it's basically just more, more draw knifing just to knock these corners down so it's a bit more sort of smooth in the hand. The handle is looking rather nice. It's nice and smooth. It feels good in the hand. However, it needs to be smoother. So you can see the sort of lines here from where the cuts are so we want all of those lines to be nice and smooth so to do that I'll just take a bit of sandpaper and give it a quick rub just 120 grit sandpaper nothing too fine I think if it's really fine it's sort of the handle feels tacky and 
just not very nice. You want your almost your hand to polish it over time. That's that's the best sort of grip I would say, and I find it works best from starting off at one twenty. I've got the handle nice and smooth, and I've just put the head on, so you can see that it's the the wood is just poking out the eye, so it's quite loosely on at the moment. When we actually oil the handle up and oil the inside of the eye, the handle will go in much more, it'll, it'll poke through a lot more on the end, so we can easily get the wedge in there and then cut cut it flush back down to maybe a little bit, little bit more out of the eye than it is at the moment. So what I'm going to do is just mark this side of the eye so I know where the bottom of the cheeks of the hammer are going to be so I can then cut down the handle and that will be where we put our wooden wedge in to hold the hammer head on. And I'm going to use a hacksaw rather than say a rip saw or anything like that because this will create a really nice narrow cut so we leave as much volume in the actual handle as possible before putting the wedge in. And obviously the wedge is there to spread the hole so it contacts on the on the inside of the cheeks just holding the hammer there in, in place. So I want to go about two thirds down so you can see that's that there's our mark from the bottom of the cheek. So I want to go about two thirds down so it'll probably be about there and the hammer head will go on lower down than that when we actually drive it on. It was just held rather loosely then. That will do it. So I've got everything ready to begin to actually put the head onto the handle. I've mixed up some epoxy which is going to be for this wedge which I've just made. I've got some oil here which I can just put on the handle and the inside of the eye. I'll use a hammer just to drive it on a little bit. So we've got a decent amount of material there poking through. A good contact on the eye from the eye on the handle. So now I'll put some epoxy. Epoxy is a bit overkill really we should just be using some wood glue but I've only got epoxy so it'll do. I'll put some epoxy onto our little wooden wedge. So I'll get the wedge set with the hammer vertically. But if I were to drive it all the way here just with a hammer, probably that little peg or the wedge would just snap. So what we do is we turn it upside down and then drive it on like this. Just being careful. That's looking pretty good. You can see we've got a nice swell on the on the end of the handle. I will cut that down just a little bit. So say we've got about 10 mil, maybe a little bit less coming out of the eye, just so it looks looks a bit nicer. The last thing that I need to do is cut it to length and then put a nice chamfer on the end of the handle. And so the last thing, just to put a bit of oil on the handle to seal it. I'll put a bit on the head as well so that doesn't rust quite as quickly as it would do if there was no sort of oil on it. And there we are, all done. So I've given this hammer a new lick of life, hopefully it'll last me 
plenty plenty more years now as as I said at the start you know this this is my first ever hammer so it probably has a little bit of sentimental value to me and I'm glad that I have now ground it ground it back and got a new face on it so it's actually a nice a nice tool not only to look at but hopefully to use all, all day every day so thank you for watching the video I hope you might have even learned something from this about how I you know shape my handles so they're nice and easy to use I like parallel edges so you can easily slide up and down so all, all of that stuff thank you for watching the video i'm rambling on as always i'll see you on the next one